you want to rile me up, tell me to shut up and sing. And if you want to rile me up, tell me to stay in a lane because I'll fucking go in every which direction I can to spite you. <laughs> okay. Hi, Butch. Hey, how are you? <laughs> We're here with Butch Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you got quite the setup there. You got fucking everything. Oh yeah, this is just my um, this is my control room area for my studio over here. You've worked with everyone from Taylor Swift to fuck. I mean, it's like you name it. It's pretty actually. There, the quote I have for you. A quote. A quote. One of America's best singer-songwriters, Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I'm like just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Our last scheduled uh, was it yeah. was tragic. It had just hit that there was a school shooting. Yeah. And, uh, and then everything that resulted with Jordan and Pearson and the Tennessee Three, have what happened over there how did you guys experience it well i was i was at all the i I went to a lot of the protests um because that was obviously and they knew it that that was a terrible thing to do uh and they shouldn't have done that and clearly they, you're they, talking they, about the republican the gop legislation yeah like, I mean, without without getting extremely political here i just that was doesn't matter what side you're on that was clearly a a terrible move on on their part to like uh to oust them for yeah. standing up for themselves basically i mean you know they're the minority big time uh in this, in the uh in the house mm -hmm. uh here so anyway it was just a terrible and, and i got into it with a lot of my friends <laughs> so called friends you know I, I was not short on words with people about it let's just put it that way and I think it's, it's important to use up your platform i mean i know there are people who are like with anyone with a musician or a sports figure shut up and play and uh, that's impossible if you want to if you want to get me going just say that phrase <laughs> the shut up and play or shut up and saying and all that is such an easy quick cop out and scapegoat for people that are clearly offended and don't agree with anything you have to say and if they if they did agree with you they would never say that they'd be like yeah speak up you know but because you disagree with them or they disagree with you it's just quick to say shut up and saying shut up and play you know same with sports people you know it's like it's so dumb and, you know, being a being a taxpayer that pays a lot of taxes, being a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a citizen of the United States and whatever, it doesn't matter if you're a public figure or just anybody on the street, you're in, you, you have your you can have opinions and you can you can have your platforms to get to talk about them as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I you've always been I mean, your band, I, I was really amazed to read how your band was one of the first touring bands to play china oh yeah back in the day my old uh my old hair metal band from back in the late 80s what was we, it like oh that was so wild um you know at the time we just looked at it as a vacation because we were kids so we were like barely in our 20s uh and um we what was know, the we, name of the band and how did that come about it was a band called South Gang and we we came and went. It was literally like a blip on the radar because that scene was quickly dying as we were had gotten signed and spent the two year, you know, tedious process of writing a record from scratch with a bunch of writers and getting in the studio and producing a record, which back then took months instead of weeks. And uh and then shooting the videos and then planning a tour and all that. So cut to like two years later, that scene had already like started drying up and I was already over it and I was already sick of it. I didn't even really enjoy being in the band anymore because I was still growing as a musician and I was still, my eyes were getting open every day from being this small town kid in from Cartersville, Georgia, rural Northern Georgia. Wow. So moving to Los Angeles at 18 and having my mind blown apart by culture 
that didn't exist in my life. I didn't have any, I had no, no, there was no cultural barometer in Cartersville, Georgia. It was like whatever was on FM radio is what you liked and heard and played in your bands. And how did a, you get to, how did you guys get to China of all places? Well, so yeah. And so I, I, sorry, I beat around the bush on that, oh, no. but, but it all leads up to, we got offered to go overseas because clearly nothing was happening for us in America anymore. And it was over before it really started, to be honest. Um, so we got a chance on the second record to uh, which was the last record uh, to go over to China and play. And of course, being four, four kind of young, dumb, uncultured kids from North Georgia, we did. We thought that was like, we thought it was going to be amazing. We thought that would be just, Oh shit, this will be like the coolest thing ever. We're, as kids, we thought, Oh, we'll go over there and be like cheap trick or the Beatles or plus they, they told us when we went over there, we were going to be playing arenas. We're like arenas. We've never even toured there. They're just like, yeah, they're just going to be packed with people. They're going to be coming anyway. So yeah. we're like, well, that sounds great. Let's do that. So when we get over there and, you know, the first arena we get to go play, it's like um, they had like two little PA speakers that would barely fill up a nightclub <laughs> that you could only put vocals in, not even put the other instruments yeah. with like a six channel PA mixer head that sat on top of it with like bamboo trussing for the lights. I mean, it was like being in a, it was a third world experience. Like a cheeky bar. Yeah. But in an arena, in a sports, we were playing all sports arenas. Some of them were, were like places where they trained for the Olympics on ice and it was the dead of winter. And so some of them had ice, they were ice rinks and they didn't cover them when mm -hmm. we played, we had to set up on the fucking ice on some of the shows which is a complete like safety hazard with all this electrical equipment and all that. I mean, and we're just slipping. And so, I mean, it, oh, I could, yeah. I could tell you stories for days about it because it was in six weeks. It, I aged six years. Um, every day was a wake up. What the fuck moment, everything, every day. So how, what did you do after, after that? Well, we broke up. And so we, we had already relocated back to Georgia and been living in Atlanta. And we just immediately, even while we were over there on the train rides, me and the bass player, Jace, were writing, we were writing songs for the next band. I just wasn't happy ever sticking to one thing, you know, like I grew up on the radio and with two older sisters, mm. so the record collections for me as a child were all over the place, you know, I mean, it was, it was everything from Donna Summer to Parliament and mm -hmm. Funkadelic to Kiss and 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 Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and Metal and Elvis and like ABBA. I mean, I mean that's I, what's impressive about your discography and who you've produced, who you've written for. It's all over the place. The one is. denominator is it's creative as fuck, and that's the way it should be. It it. I hate how in the U.S., particularly in the U.S., it's like you're only given permission if you're an artist, you can only be slotted, siloed in one thing. Like yep. if you're an actor, you cannot be a painter or anything else. It's You cannot be multidimensional. And with music, how dare you? Right. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Stay in oh, Yeah. Well, it's like I know that in terms of fiction, it's like you're appropriating if... I write about uh, being gender fluid, uh, something that I actually identify with, but that's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's dare you get out of your lane. Yeah. And, and by the way, if some, like I said earlier, when, if you want to rile me up, tell me to shut up and sing. And if you want to rile me up, tell me to stay in a lane because <laughs> I'll fucking go in every which direction I can to spite you. Uh, <laughs> and, and by the way, I, you know, at the risk of sounding cocky, I can because a music is it, it, it is a fluid pathway artistically. Mm -hmm. And the and also the minute I gave up being in a band mm -hmm. and was considered just whatever you want to call it, a solo artist, um, all bets are off. 